Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, happy All Saints Day to all of you. Um, as we gather together in the remembrance of those in our lives and those in the church who have died in the faith preceding us. Today is one of those days that for those who aren't Christians, it's rather hard to explain the kind of mindset that we're in. And they probably wouldn't really understand too much about what we're going to talk about. Because without faith, it's hard to have joy and hope in the midst of sorrow. It's hard to have joy and hope when part of what you're thinking about is death. And yet, because of our faith in Jesus, today is a day of celebration. Today is a day of joy and hope. Not that it doesn't bring with it sorrow, as we remember those we love, spouses, children, parents, cousins, and dear friends who have preceded us in death, but those that have faith in Jesus, it is not just sorrow today, but sorrow that is swallowed up in joy and hope in Jesus. So today we're going to remember in our prayers the faithful departed from our own congregation this past year. But again, not with just sorrow, but sorrow in the midst of the joy and hope we have in Jesus. For we know we will see them again. The world understands the sorrow. It really does. It's obvious, right? You probably have someone in your mind right now, and you miss them. And the memories, the fond memories you have of them also bring with them a pain because they're not here. The world understands that. Death is something that hurts, and it's something that causes us to be afraid. That's why we struggle against it so mightily in the world. But what the world doesn't understand is the joy and the hope that we have in Jesus. And if we're being honest, at times, even those of us in faith in the church, we forget that we have this hope when we're in the presence of death and all the sorrow that it brings. That is, in fact, one of the reasons that the church does All Saints Day to bring God's word to bear, to remind you of the hope that we have and the joy that we have in the resurrection promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, a couple of our readings work together to illustrate this beautifully. This Revelation 7 reading that we heard read and our gospel reading for today from Matthew chapter 5. Now, our gospel reading today contains another set of scriptures that if you're not a person of faith, doesn't make a lot of sense. The Beatitudes. And in the Beatitudes, Jesus is describing those who are blessed in pretty much the opposite terms of the world. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the lowly. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are persecuted and cursed for my name's sake. Blessed are those who are lowly. It's a hard thing for the world to grasp. And maybe you remember that before you came to faith. Or maybe even as a person of faith, you find those things hard to understand. Well, here on All Saints Day, we're going to break down what Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 5, because it's pointing us to the future hope that we have in Jesus that is described so beautifully in Revelation chapter 7. So the key one to understand the Beatitudes is the very first one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the key to understanding that one is knowing who exactly are the poor in spirit. Who is that referring to? Well, if you look at the rest of Jesus' ministry and the times in the Gospel of Matthew when this phrase is used, it's almost always used in conjunction with the whole list of the people whom Jesus has come to minister to. And that's the lame, the blind, the crippled, the deaf, and the poor. The people who have a obvious and deep need. They lack something crucial that they cannot provide for themselves, that they cannot fix, and this is who Jesus has come to minister to. And so the poor in spirit are understood as those who are lacking 
in spiritual things. And who might that be? It's everybody. Jesus opens the Beatitudes, which is the beginning of the section we know as the Sermon on the Mount, by talking about how all of those who lack in spiritual things, a.k.a. everyone, in him, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a big deal. Before Jesus comes along, the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are properly religious who follow all the statutes and the laws and the rules of the religious community, they are the ones who are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. And here Jesus comes along and says, blessed are the poor in spirit, the people who can't do the spiritual things, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So that sets the stage for the rest of that. And notice that the tense there in the second half of that beatitude is a present active tense. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is true right now. It's not some future promise, but in the person of Jesus, yours is the kingdom of heaven, even now. But what Jesus is going to say throughout the Sermon on the Mount and the rest of the Beatitudes here are understood to apply to the poor in spirit. And in case you haven't figured that out yet, that's you and that's me. And all who have faith in Christ are the poor in spirit. Well, the next set of the Beatitudes, verses 4 to 6, talk about What's now going to happen to the poor in spirit that Jesus has entered the picture? That now they have faith in him. And the theme of it is that he's going to fill our emptiness. He's going to provide the thing that we lack. Just look at the language of the next few Beatitudes. Those who mourn, those who are lowly, and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you've been in mourning... You know how empty it feels. If you've really been brought low, humbled, you know how empty you feel when you realize you're not as great as you thought you were, nor even as good as you thought you were. And those who are hungering and thirsting for something, well, they're hungering and thirsting for the thing they don't have, righteousness. In other words, these poor in spirit people We're empty. They're in mourning, they're humbled, and they have no righteousness of their own. And yet, what does he say about each one? Those who mourn will be comforted. Those who are lowly, they're going to inherit the earth. And those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're going to be satisfied. They're going to receive righteousness. But notice that there's been a change in tense from the first beatitude to these. Now all of a sudden we're talking about a future promise. Now for those of you who've ever mourned the loss of a loved one, can maybe resonate with this future promise. Because your comfort right now isn't total. But it will be. That's the promise our Lord is making us here. That is the future he's reminding us of. Things are going to change some point in the future. So what's that future promise of Jesus? Well, now to understand what the future promise of Jesus is, we hop over to our Revelation 7 reading. Because Revelation chapter 7 is giving us a picture of, of the future promise, the full consummation, the completed work of salvation in God through Jesus Christ that is yours through faith in him. So Revelation 7 starts off by saying that God is instructing those who have been given the authority to harm the earth to not do it until he has brought forth those who are sealed by his name. And then you get that big long list of numbers like Revelation is wont to do. Right? And the number 12 is a number of completeness because it's the number 4 times the number 3. So you have the, earth, the number 4 is the earthly number and number 3 is the heavenly number, the trinity. 
So the complete, complete, uh, completeness of creation is represented in the number 12. And the people of God are represented by 12 times 12, the 144,000. So that's why the very next verse, it doesn't give you then the 144,000. It says, a multitude that no one could number. That multitude is who we remember today. That multitude is where your loved one, your, the saints that have gone before us in death, whoever is in your mind right now, those people are in that multitude. And what is that multitude up to? That, poor in, that group that is the poor in spirit are now on the day of the Lord surrounding the throne of God and they're having a great big victory celebration. And what are they celebrating victory over? Sin, death, and the devil. They are no more. They have been vanquished. This is our hope, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is why while we remember those who have died in the faith, those who are dear to us, those who are dear to this congregation, we mourn with hope and with joy. Because our future is certain, and it is great, and we will see them again. So what are the multitudes saying as they gather around the throne of the land? Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And then John, in his vision, one of the elders comes up to him and says, Who are these people? They're not identified in Revelation 7 yet. Who are the people in the white robes, the great multitude that are from every nation and people and tribe and tongue? And he says, they are the ones that are coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb. They have been made white. Those are the saints that we celebrate on All Saints Day. That we remember, that we look to for examples whose lives pointed us to our Lord Jesus Christ and this very sure and certain future hope of the resurrection of all flesh, of the celebration victory of life eternal face to face with God. We will see them again. And just imagine in the scope of eternity how small the time of parting is. What a wondrous and gracious God we have. For giving such a future hope to those who are poor in spirit, those who lacked righteousness, those who are in mourning, the lowly of the world that were trampled by the strong. This is their future. This is your future. This is my future. Because of what our Lord Jesus has done. It is why today we don't remember in despair, but with hope and joy. No more hunger or thirst for those who are gathered around the throne of the Lamb. No more pain and suffering. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I always loved that phrase. If that doesn't bring you comfort, I don't know what will. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So dear friends in Christ, today as we remember the saints of Jesus who have gone before us, dear ones, loved ones, be encouraged by this promise that they are surrounding the victorious throne of God in his heavenly kingdom. Free from pain, free from suffering, free from every kind of sorrow, and you will see them there again. And our future hope in that sustains us even now. It's just like when you're traveling a long ways to see friends or family. It's the knowledge of the destination and what awaits you there that makes the journey bearable, that sustains you on the way. And so it is for us here in this life as we await the full consummation of the promises of the gospel of Jesus we are sustained by our sure and certain hope in Jesus. And in his mercy, he comes to us throughout our journey here on earth. 
in his word and in his sacraments to give us the gifts of nourishment for our faith to sustain us on the way. Today, as he reminds us of the promise that we have in him to bring us comfort in the midst of our mourning and hope instead of despair. And as he brings us to his table to give us the gift of his son's body and blood, whose death hallowed the graves of the saints and whose resurrection is the first fruits of the flesh of those who believe. So now, too, we will be raised to the glory of the Father. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is yours. And all the saints who have already passed away in the faith, it is theirs. And it will be fully realized on the day of the Lord. So until that day, we rejoice that our Lord Jesus sustains us in this promise of our sure and certain future hope of everlasting life, where we will join too in the chorus of the saints. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen.